This is what a $40,000 cash engine look like. Who's the average one now? <laughs> My success is intentional. I know that I've been gone for quite some time and I'm here to explain a couple of things. I did not want to make another YouTube video. One minute I want to make a video, the next minute I don't want to make a video. One minute I want to update everybody on what's going on with me. The next minute I'm like, I don't want nobody in my business. I go back and forth with it. A lot. Let's just start from three months ago. So, I put $30,000 into my 1997 Freightliner FLD 120. I decided to go to the oil field and do that type of work, pneumatic work. And in order to do pneumatic work, you have to have a blower, PTO, drive shaft, you have to have a pneumatic trailer. Um, hoses it's just a whole different ball game it's a whole other field in trucking and it's more hands-on than anything I've ever did in my whole entire life when it comes to truck driving I had started dating somebody I was really into the relationship um, he was the main reason why I decided to get oil field equipment to run. Um, and so things wasn't perfect, but things were working at the time. Long story short, I ended up getting cheated on. Um, you know, found them at the strip club, bunch of stuff in the cell phone, just arguments, just things just went downhill pretty fast and I decided to leave I decided to leave Texas and come back home bring my truck home and at the time I had two trucks and two trailers on my way home I cleared out my Peterbilt truck put everything in my Freightliner and continued to go home with my drive-in trailer and I left my oil field trailer in Louisiana Long story short, I get to Mississippi and my radiator goes out. And that cost me around almost $2,000 for the part. Labor was around $800. Get to Alabama and I'm leaking coolant everywhere. Got that patched up, that was around $125. Kept going. Got all the way to Georgia, delivered the load, picked up another load in Georgia that was delivering North Carolina. I'm like, boom, I'm almost home. And you know, I'm heartbroken, I'm sad, but you know, you just gotta pick yourself up and just continue to live your life and you know, make money so you can eat at the end of the day. Get to Charlotte, North Carolina where I used to do Amazon and my engine blows on the side of the highway. White smoke, blow by, knocking, knocking of the engine and I'm low key devastated. I drive my truck to a nearby shop. I make it all the way there. I go and hop on a flight to Georgia and then from Georgia to Texas, Dallas, Texas. And then I get a rental car and drive three hours to Shreveport, Louisiana. Get to Louisiana and jump in my Peterbilt and deadhead all the way from Shreveport, Louisiana to Concord, North Carolina pick up my trailer and drop the load off about two days later after my engine blows. I do drive van for about two weeks and then 
I hit up the shop owner and I text him and I'm like, hey, any update on my truck? He doesn't text me back. He doesn't call me. Truck been there like a month. I don't hear nothing from him. So I find another shop and they say, yes, you can bring your truck to us and we'll touch it in a few days. I spend around $2,000 having my truck towed from Concord, North Carolina to Griffin, Georgia. My truck gets there safely and I give them all my information, my name, my business name, phone number, email, everything. About a week later, the owner calls my phone and he says, Your engine is not rebuildable. Your block is cracked. A piston or something like that went through the block and cracked it. Your engine is just not rebuildable. Do not bring me a engine from eBay. He sends me the model number to my engine and the serial number, which I already had that. I hit up two places. One place doesn't even have any engines. There's a wait for like two months and then there's 60 guys in front of me. The other place I heard bad reviews so I just didn't even wanna go with them. So I have the guy send me the information to my email so I can get on the waiting list. And the crazy part about all of this is that a few days prior, I had sold my Peterbilt. I sold it, so I don't have a truck. <sighs> I don't have a truck and I'm not looking to rent a truck. I just wanna get back in my truck as fast as possible. A few days pass and I'm just trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. So I start doing all my paperwork. Um, that I was behind on and I decided to rekindle my relationships with my family members that I haven't seen or spoke to in a very long time. And things really started working out. It went well. Um, and I was happy about that. But at the same time, I was stressed about my business and what was going to happen. How fast was I going to be able to get my truck back and up and running to make money to stay in business? <sighs> a few days later, I get a call from the guy that I'm supposed to be getting an engine from. He says, I have 10 engines coming new engines are you interested i said yes he said it's gonna cost you a little bit more money but it'll be here in a few days when the engines came he called me i paid the money and he sent me pictures beautiful engine um, and I had the engine sent to the shop, but of course it took a couple of days to get to the shop. On a Friday, I just didn't hear from the place that broke down my engine. So I sent them a couple of text messages because they never answered my voicemail and they didn't answer the phone for me. So I sent them a text just saying, Hey, can you please call me? I've texted and called you guys' this phone number, even left a voicemail, haven't heard from you guys. I would like an invoice or an estimate to install this new engine. Lady calls me back like three minutes later and me and her start going back and forth. 
she's trying to tell me that she didn't get my email which that was a lie you got my email because i gave it to you when we thought that my engine was going to be rebuildable that's how long i've been asking for an estimate and a, and a receipt an invoice something because my engine is coming on tuesday today is friday and i don't want no surprises well she told me she didn't have my email woo 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 so i said if you was answering the phone maybe you would have it so she got an attitude and said well we're getting a hundred phone calls a day and i said that's not my problem that doesn't have nothing to do with me because it don't and she got an attitude and was like well and i was like well don't worry about the transmission so when i said that the lady hung up the phone on me when she hung up the phone, I called back. She wouldn't answer the phone. She sent me a text message to my phone saying, with that kind of attitude, you can come get your truck. That was Friday afternoon. I was at their shop Monday morning. And on the way there in Georgia, I get rear-ended by some boy. And so he rear-ends my car. And I'm just like, what's next? Like, it's just so much going on. What's next? What, what, what's next? <laughs> Make it to their yard. And my engine is coming off the back of a tractor trailer. I'm super excited. I pull my phone out. I'm like, wow, the engine is here on Monday. It was supposed to be here on Tuesday. I don't even care about my car accident no more that I had. I was super happy. The owner, you know, he threw shade and all of this. He said a couple of slick things, but I didn't care. This was my moment. My $40,000 engine just showed up and I'm here to see it. And it's absolutely beautiful. The owner's like, I can't get to your truck um for like two weeks from now and i'm just like really long story short i ended up ordering a transmission from freightliner and having it shipped to his shop i'm just gonna speed this video up and speed the story up for y'all get my truck back and the compressor line the ac compressor line is broken he gives me my truck back with no ac i'm bob telling to get to the fuel station to get fuel because i'm really on empty and my truck is not even going into gear okay then my truck when you turn it on the pto the blower is just turning on, just cutting on with the truck having no air pressure. Just three major red flags that just didn't make sense to me. And it's just like, did y'all give me my truck back like this because I'm black? Did y'all give me my truck back like this because I'm a female, I'm a woman, I'm a young lady? Did y'all give me my truck back like this because of the secretary accountant lady in the office getting upset with me over what I said? Or are y'all upset with me because I bought all of my parts, including my motor, and y'all couldn't charge me more, like upcharge me on parts? And the only thing you did was make money off the labor like what is it what is it why give me my truck back in a heat wave with no ac so i sent a video to the owner showing him how the clutch would just stay down and not come back up and the truck kept cutting off and stuff and he told me i need either a clutch adjustment or a clutch linkage adjustment I just told him could I bring my truck back to him through text messages and he said yes well somebody called me and said hey can you be in such and such location on this day to make twelve thousand dollars so 
what I was going to do was drive my truck back to Georgia and let them fix what they needed to fix because I'm having issues that I didn't have before my truck engine blew, okay? But instead I went to go do the load. Why I get loaded and my truck won't even move? Truck is not drivable. Truck is not drivable. So I'm gonna stop right here for y'all cause this seems like a story time video and it's kind of long, so I'm going to go ahead and edit it up and post it up to update y'all on this situation. Because I'm in a hotel and I've been in a hotel for all of these days. And I have multiple stories to update y'all on because so much has happened ever since I paid off equipment and got new equipment and got rid of old equipment like so much so much i have stories so i hope you guys enjoyed this story time i hope y'all learned from me and i just wanted to show and tell y'all that you can do everything right and something can still go wrong but it's not about what happens when it goes wrong it's just about how you recover and get over the wrong you know what I'm saying so yeah that's that's where I'm at with it $40,000 engine $14,000 truck $4,000 transmission ten thousand dollar shop bill and now i'm going to have another bill because it's in the shop right now that's why i'm sitting here i love you guys i've missed you guys and i guess until next time coco's journey <laughs>